What's up, everybody? I'm Kiyoshi. Michael Beveraji. And this is Take Away My Mic. What? Hey. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> But it's a celebration episode. That's what it is. It's not well, even. A, it's not a review or a breakdown or none of that. It's a celebration. Let's call it that. Most definitely, man. I, I was going to show you on camera because I just got my Cowboy Carter playing cards in the mail. Oh uh, shit! That is that's a very very good uh, reveal that you were saving for that. Anybody? <laughs> anybody know? Anybody who knows me knows. I'm I'm the cards girl. I play spades. I whoop ass. I always have a, <laughs> a deck of cards in my purse. Right now, I have my exclusive Marvel deck in my purse. What um, What's the What do you got? They're regular playing cards, right? And Beyonce is on the Queen and the Ace. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask. Okay, the Queen and the Ace. It's so cute. That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> it's so cute. So I was like, oh, I have a new deck. I collect playing cards too. So I was just like, this is. This is perfect for me. I couldn't get everything in the uh, Beyonce drop. Y'all swarm that shit. I was gone for an hour and I came back and everything was gone except for these cards. I was just glad these are the only things I like really, really want. Yeah, you got what you wanted. That's all you need. Insane. But we I'm are. I'm sure you can find the rest of the shit on eBay. <laughs> like two times the price, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not doing none of that. The reselling. Yeah. Y'all suck. Y'all suck eggs. I do have my vinyl, though, up there. If you see, I have. I see that back there. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's the that's the pageant, or yes. is that the, yeah. Had to do it. Had to had to have at least. I'm gonna have all the vinyl collections of all three of these acts. Um, I know people were complaining because the vinyls are don't a tell, little bit different than the streaming or whatever. Don't tell Billie Eilish. I. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna snitch on you? She no, snitch, I, she'll snitch on all the artists making mad vinyls. I cackled it. I was like, oh, girl. She, she be having hella vinyls, too, so I just laughed. I was just <laughs> like, yeah, girl, I feel you, though. I get what you mean about overconsumption and things. Um, But at least the projects are different. It's not the same album twice. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. We are here today to go track by track and talk about Cowboy Carter. Okay. And my sister called me. I have to put my phone on, on work mode. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, we're here to talk about Beyonce. As you guys know, this is my bread and butter. I am extreme. Extre yes, it is. I'm extremely excited to gush about her, but also I can't wait to hear like Michael's thoughts as well. Just because he's a new, he I consider you to be like a fresh Beyonce listener because mm -hmm. you listened to her before, but like you just recently started like digging into her discography. So yeah. I just love, I, I'd love to see how you feel. As far as like from what you've heard and like this project, but me, I've been here a while. I've been here a very, very long time since I was like seven. So, <laughs> so, so I feel like I have way just a vast, a vast opinion of Beyonce that she might not have. There's definitely a big, there's definitely a lot more bigger picture questions and thoughts that I want to hear from you as we go through this. Considering what you just said, considering you've been here from the beginning, you can outline her entire career up until this point. I can do my best. I've mean, I've, slipped, I've slipped a bit in my standum, but I'm I'm still I'm still rocking with Beyonce. I'm extremely proud of this project, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm genuinely still digesting it. So like we might not get to like every every tiny tiny little detail in each track because I'm still processing the magnitude of this project. To be completely honest. Well, for those for those of you that don't know, which I'm going to assume is a small amount of you, unless this video hits the algorithm and helps us out a little bit. Yeah, like if, it and subscribe, guys. It helps. <laughs> that'd be great. If you're a new viewer hopping on and don't know us and are watching this because you're a Beyonce fan and wanted to see a couple pretty nice people break down the album as best they could, uh, we have videos to our fir of our first reaction to this album, Cowboy Carter, both on both our channels. The link's in the description. Absolutely. And that was... I couldn't, I didn't know what to focus on. Yeah. I feel like I'm naturally, I care about the voice. So I was just paying attention to how insane she sounded throughout. Um, I definitely got more into the story and the flow of the project on like my second listen. But overall, I'm going to just start like this. Me personally, and everybody not going to agree, and that's fine. Um, I believe that this is her best body of work. Oh, you feel confident in that a weekend? I do. Okay. I feel okay. I feel I feel like it's her best body of work because of 
the story and the purpose and everything about it is revolutionary. Everything that it represents, the reason it exists, every just everything. Yeah, you have to think about everything. You everything. can't take the album at face value. You have to consider everything. Literally, and that's the only reason why. Like, obviously, we have other tracks on like other albums that we love, and like her voice is insane on every album. So, like, it's not too much to dissect around that. But like, this album is so intentional. It just has so much history in it that I'm like, nah, man, this is like a time capsule. This is like it gives Pulitzer to me anyway. <laughs> like, it, in regards to like the. Everything about it, man. Just everything about it. So I, I genuinely think it's her best. It's her best body of work as a whole, for sure. <laughs> the biggest thing that washed over me, and, and like this will give away kind of like a lot of how I feel about the album in total. But I, I don't think I said this in my video. But I have said hints of this about Beyonce in other videos, other videos that we've done here on this channel. Um, those videos might not exist anymore. Uh, but. Um, they do not. The thing that washed over me more than anything, not only as I listened to this album for the first time, but as I re-listened and as I just like absorbed everything, as I was just sitting like editing my video that I made listening to the album for the first time and just like really soaking in um, every song without, you know, worrying about a camera or anything like that, was that for my entire life, I've been listening to music in a very person, like in a very like this is helping me kind of way. I'm relating to this. And it's helping me get by and this person had similar experiences. So I'm attaching myself to this and this is like an outlet for me in a way. Uh, or I'm just like finding music to have a good time too. Like it's just like everybody else make playlists based on the mood you're in or based on what you're feeling in that moment. Yeah. I've never I've never quite listened to, to music. I think it's more than like, in, like intentionally listen to music. I've never had a reason to listen to music and feel the importance of an artist. And this is the first. This is the first time I ever felt in my life of listening to music, like, yo, this is probably the most important thing you've ever listened to in your life up until this point. Wow! Oh, I love that. That washed over me in a really emotional way. Not even, like beyond the first. The first listen, yes, but like in a real, real identifiable way on multiple listens. That's incredible. No, like. Yeah, and it's it's what you said. It's why it's you kind of alluded to. We'll get into more detail, I'm sure, when we go along in this video. But when you said that this is, you think her best body of work, you have to factor everything. You have to factor everything, and then and then when you factor in how fucking great all the songs are, it's stupid. let's just get it. Let's let's just do it. It's let's stupid. <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> It, it really it, she she is she is and has been for a very long time and this is just the it, I'm like how are how are you peaking decades into your into your, not even peaking but like this is you're just you just keep getting better there was net there's no fall off <laughs> no no fall off just yeah. a continuation of excellence I just can't I want to talk about the cover first before we get into the let's album. do it let's start the beginning because there was so much chitter chatter so much <laughs> it just <laughs> false and misplaced anger um <laughs> because Beyonce had the flag on the cover so let's talk about um what the flag represents just for two seconds okay so the red and white <laughs> the white represents purity and innocence Okay, and red represents courage in the face of danger or the or valor. Um, and blue represents justice, which is why it wasn't in the in the frame. That's why that's why the blue was not in the frame. It's clear and evident if you if you live in America, you know what's going on in America. Um, our justice system is ass. There's no there's no vigilance, there's there's very little protection. Um there's just a lacking of justice all, all the way around in this country, which is why it was cut out of the frame. I was like, this woman, I knew, I just knew, like, like, please. Also, what I think, like, after listening to the project, like, red and white represents the bones and the blood that built this damn country. Okay? Mm -hmm. a, tri a tribute to our Black ancestors. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I left out of my skin. <laughs> I was like this woman and she's riding atop 
of a war horse, if you didn't know. I had to look that up because I wanted to know exactly what type of horse that was. And it's famously like the breed is a war horse. Mom was calling us to action. And she's ready to lead us in a better direction. Ready to lead this country in a better <laughs> direction. Remember her Verizon commercial? She said, I'm running for Beyonce of the United States. Okay? That's right. That's right. That's right. Everything she does has purpose so the next time y'all open y'all yeah 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 you're yapping boxes to make assumptions um and determinations about the content of this woman's character read well all you would have had to do and this is like a perfect segue because you you talk about the cover and that's the first thing you look at when it comes to the album obviously now if you go into the album and you press play on the first track she addresses she addresses Lots of issues in America. She addresses the cover, essentially. She addresses the lack thereof, showing of the whole flag uh, on the cover. She talks about, and the, the, my favorite part, I mean, we could talk about the song openly here now that we're on American Requiem specifically. Like, my favorite, maybe my favorite harmony in the entire album is that the, the big ideas, yeah, are buried here. She crushes that harmony so well. And then you get to hear it at the end again, which we'll get into when we get to Amen. I mean, yeah, there's there's so much. We can talk about the lyrics if you want to go through it, but there's so much in this first track that directly addresses lots of issues in this country. Absolutely. I, I just felt like Mama just threw down the gauntlet. She was like, they, <laughs> that, she, "That first track comes out swinging at America, like at America, swinging." And it's and it's the second, I believe it's the second longest track on the project. So oh, she, it? so her being like, "Can you hear me? Like, do you yeah. hear the words that I'm saying? Like, be that. clear." Love, yeah, don't like, don't talk over me. Don't like listen to me. And even like as as, as like li listening for the first time, I was talking. I was like, "Oh, let me shut the, let me sh let me silence." <laughs> His mama's talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, I love it. And just talking about the change that needs to happen in this mm -hmm. country, man. Her voice sounded so powerful. I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even digest all the lyrics on the first listen because I was just like, she sounds. Y'all made this woman mad. I said that in my video. I was like, y'all made this woman angry. Like she, she really came in powerful, and it consumed me. That look at here, look at here, look at here, the crackle in her voice, like the almost rock grungy sort of delivery she was giving off. Almost like a little preview to act three a little bit, maybe with the vocals if we're ready for that. No, it was that. And I heard, I immediately heard Tina Turner. That's one of her biggest mm. in, uh, inspirations. Okay. On my second listen, it was all Prince. I don't know how familiar you are with Prince, um, but he, the way that he uses his voice, the whining, the... The yelling and like all of that is very Prince as well. Um, mm -hmm. and it's just her voice, <laughs> her voice has just gotten so much better over time and her range disgusting. Can you hear me? Can we stand for something? Now is the time to face the wind. Like the the wind is something that's against you, like ev you know, everything, all our obstacles, everything that is against us in this world right now in this country particularly right now we like it is time to stand up for the things you believe in and fight back it's, it's time for that as ever and it's the opening track it's the opening track and it's a clear indication of how she feels about this country so if y'all yeah. had any questions or concerns or whatever it's it, it's all like please there's girl. there's nothing wishy-washy or like at all on the fence or like playing both sides like it's nothing if that's how you read the lyrics you gotta like listen again or reread re because she's doing she's doing none of that at all i also wrote i was like y'all just have no clue what this black woman has had to fight through to get where she is in this country. Everybody loves to talk about like Beyonce is larger than life. Like Beyonce is all of these other things. I'm like, and how do you think that journey has been for her? Mm -hmm. Where it doesn't matter how attractive or talented you are. Black women are not valued in this country. She fought tooth and nail to be seen, um, to be respected, to be valued, all of that man so like in none of just none of that can be ignored or pushed aside and that's when she oh she's overrated she's always i just don't i i don't understand a lot of the critiques around this woman but mostly because of that because i'm like yeah everything that y'all saying about her she's beautiful she's talented she's also a black woman from texas with twang and her voice in america yeah and she she like in the same track which is important because of the things she addressed in the beginning of the track she 
starts to address what you're talking about. She had kind of validates where she's from, talks about having family in Galveston, Texas, and Alabama and Louisiana. And you don't say it's country. She's country. To, then she like starts to speak to like some of the obstacles you say when they people telling her like you speak to country. Like what? Like what kind of? And I'm I'm assuming this is at a young age. She's probably hearing a lot of this when they were in Destiny's Child and like they were doing interviews and different stuff. People would literally make fun of of their accents, not just Beyonce's, but Kelly's too, because Kelly's also from uh, Texas, mm -hmm. and like and try to say that they were uneducated. And Beyonce went to private school, so I'm just like, okay. Um, but they hear the twang in her voice. She had no problem being like she was very like lackadaisical and relaxed and chill. Um, very early in her career, but I feel like that was one of the reasons why she stopped doing a whole bunch of interviews because people was trying to shape her and mold her and be like, oh, well, you need to be more of this and blah, blah, blah. And now here we are on the back end and y'all telling mama she not country enough to make, to make country music. And it's just like a slap in the face. I'm just like, all right. And, Let's and, get into it. Like it's, it's what makes this song so powerful. And I, I've got like a thing for openers and closers again we'll get to the closer we'll get to the fucking closer on this album but i've got a thing for openers just just being really important on albums like obviously um setting the tone of the album setting the purpose of the album uh and this this opener is perfect it's perfect yeah it's perfect it's got i i had i think five tracks on this album that are perfect i'm not that like that's rare. There's a lot of albums that don't have any. There's a lot of albums that might have one or two. If you have two, you've you got a great album. She had five on here for me, just for me personally, and this is one of them. Uh, and again, the, op the opener is perfect. This is one of my. This is one of my. This is in my top five for sure. Uh, and it just sets the tone, man. Like you just know what you're getting into. Completely. And then going from this into Blackbird. <laughs> That's just crazy. <laughs> I I. It broke me emotionally, and I was filming my reaction, and I was like, bro, it's track two. I ain't got no setting spray on. I can't cry, like ball cry, the way yeah. that I wanted to when I realized what she was doing. Because I looked looked at the track list, and I saw, I was like, all of these incredible black country artists on here, Tanner Adele, Britney Spencer, Tierra Kennedy, mm -hmm. and Raina Roberts specifically on this song. Mama made her own Black Beatles <laughs> to cover this song that is so famously a response to the civil rights um, movement in support of black women in in uplifting black women and i just i couldn't get over it i could not get over it the harmonies were beautiful everything about it was beautiful and it just meant so much to me it means so much to me I didn't even know the the original meaning of the song originally by the like I actually listened to the song for the first like by the Beatles before I listened to Beyonce's cover like really quick. That was your first time hearing it. It was my first time ever hearing it. Yeah. Oh I, wow! I had, never, I had never heard the original. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't like look up the meaning or anything. I just kind of took it at face value. But then when I found out the meaning, like afterwards, it meant that much more that Beyonce decided to cover it. Of course. She wasn't going to do just random covers on this album. This album's too intentional. Mm -hmm. She's she's too purposeful. She's proven that with Renaissance. She's proven that time again, especially her last few projects. Uh, and this following American Requ Requiem is insane. <laughs> it's like, let's just, let's just get back to center. Like, y'all don't ever want to center, like, black women and, like, everything that we fight through, everything that we deal with. Um yeah, and shout out the scandal because they who listen the show that yes the show because in that show it's like her her the main character's father was like you have to be what like you have to be twice as good to get half of what some other people get as a black as a black woman in this country you have to be twice as good Beyonce is very is so clearly excellent so clearly just a master of her craft. And still, and still gets compared to whoever. And it makes no sense. <laughs> I'm like short circuiting. What? And, that, <laughs> and, that, and that's one of the reasons why it bothers me so much. It's like this woman is, is twice as good. I, d I know that this um I know that this song has like a much deeper meaning, uh, especially as far as race goes, especially like the time that it was made by 
It's written by Paul McCartney, right? Uh, Paul it, McCartney and John Lennon, I believe. And John Lennon, the two of them? Okay. Especially at the time that it came out and the, the things that, that those two gentlemen were trying to stand for, the people they were trying to speak for didn't have voices. Uh, but for like listening to the song without understanding that, I, I found even more meaning. Because there's like, it's, you were waiting for this moment to arrive. You were always waiting for this moment to arise. And this entire album is a product of Beyonce waiting pretty much her entire career to be able to make this kind of music. Mm -hmm. Like she's been waiting for this moment to arise. She's spreading her wings out to fly. You can say her wings are broken because of the of results of what she spoke about in American Requiem with um, being told she's speaking to country, uh, with the situation she had at the that award show a few years ago that she spoke about on her Instagram post. Lord. I mean, like you can take multiple meanings from this song on top of like the most important meaning that the original song has. And then when you have obviously several black women, especially like country artists on this song, it makes it that much more important. And it just feels like a song that like the song was written in 1960 and mm -hmm. it feels like it was just made for Beyonce to be singing today like it just it just feels like it's meant for her voice I never thought I'd hear Beyonce sing that song and that was another reason why I was so emotional it's so emotional it's so that was emotional. the first that was the first black uh Beatles song I ever heard I said that in my reaction too I was obsessed with that song in college and then I went through the rest of their discography but I attached to that song immediately for and sure. um so hearing her sing it I just I had two fight tears I was fighting <laughs> and it just didn't matter because like, later on i definitely wept um yes, you did. but also a note all of those girls streaming numbers have skyrocketed she, Be beyonce <laughs> always uplifting always like bringing people to the forefront that she believes like deserves it and are talented so congratulations to each and every one of those girls um and I hope that they continue building like more people checking them out and stuff because they sounded beautiful. Like the <laughs> harmonies, I was just like the layering of this. I I sat and I I sat and I was just listening because obviously like I study the backgrounds of everything. That's like one of my favorite things to do. And I don't know which one of them girls yeah. is the con is the contralto who was up there and the just yeah, yeah, floating like a goddamn bird. I don't know which one of y'all it was, <laughs> that's, but it that's, was that's fitting. It was beautiful, man. It it's was fitting. Beautiful. And on the, on the Beatles version, they have an actual bird, like you know, making its noises like it's being set free or whatever. Like it's just enjoying its life. And on this song, you don't need that. Like you've got the artists able to like replaced you know that to set the tone of the song it is like all of these tracks these first listen going from blackbird into 16 carriages she's just trying to make us cry all right well hold on i know so we'll get a let's get a little bit of let's get a little bit ahead the first four tracks are psychotic what <laughs> like you can't do that <laughs> emotionally bro and emotionally yes that's what i'm saying i'm like emotionally insane to have four tracks like this at the beginning of your album it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, like it actually, and this I'm, one is American Requiem, Blackbird, Sixteen Carriages, then Protector with Rumi Carter in the beginning asking for a lullaby. Boy, come on, give, let us breathe, bro. Dude, she ain't giving no chance, just no chance at all. I I leaned on the R and B and country in Sixteen Carriages. This is also one of my favorite songs from this project to sing personally. I how, mean, okay, how 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 are you doing that? Because I'm out on that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, hey, I'm your I'm your singing friend. You know, I, I keep it low key, but it's but it's there. Yes. And this song is fucking you. You you need to have that breath under control to pull off this song. It's breath control. It's vocal agility. It's yeah. it's. And this is why I say I study. I study, man, for a reason. Because this woman, you would think them riffs are easy. You oh would, no! You would, and this you, song, would listen to, you would listen. You would listen and be like. Oh, it's just a little up and down. It's just yeah, you a run out of down. breath, though. Run out of breath. It's very easy to go flat or sharp. It's very easy, like to not stay on pitch because of how quick it is. Mm -hmm. And I've just been, I've, I've been drilling it. I've been, dr <laughs> I've been drilling sixteen <laughs> carriages since it came out. Um, so you are you trying to say? The follow up to the SZA cover is going to be the sixteen carriages cover. Is I that the know. announcement live no. officially? Absolutely not. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. I'm I'm still working on covering greats. 
I, I was talking to my vocal teacher about that. I was like, I don't want to touch no Whitney Houston. I don't want to touch no Tina Turner. I don't want to touch no Beyonce. I'm working on it. But she was just like, you have the voice for it. It's a mental thing. And I'm just like, it's perfect the way it is. They don't, I don't want to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I got> you. <laughs> it's just one of those things. But I, I singing this song in my room, walking around and cleaning and stuff, is it, it pushes you to work. It is a lot of breath control. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, for me, this this one was uh, this was my favorite. I'm not saying it's better than Texas Hold'em because both of, they're so fucking different. Like they are. Both, the, you can't compare the songs. It's like impossible. This is my favorite single too, though. If you were gonna say that, but this was this is my preferred to like play and listen yeah. to casually, and uh, and I just like 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 you like I like a more R and B forward, just like Beyonce singing her ass off type of track, and that's what this is. But well, what's insane to me, this is maybe the hardest thing to do as an artist is to drop most of the time, not every time. Some artists are really smart about this if they have enough good tracks on their album. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, you drop your best couple songs before your album. Most of the time. But not every artist can afford that. Like Not, not every artist has enough tracks mm-hmm. to, to drop before the album. Uh, they might drop one and they have another really good one and they save it for the actual album. That way you didn't drop your only two good tracks. But my point is, is that like Beyonce dropped 16 characters, Texas Hold'em, two smash sing- Like Texas Hold'em is like the biggest song in the world for a long time. Yeah. 16 characters could be the better one if you think about it. Like they're both amazing singles. And then you get to the album and this never happens where you could, you could argue it got buried. You could argue that like neither song is the top five song on the album. They're not. <laughs> which is fucking crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like most artists can't pull, not most, pretty much was like there's, I can't think of any artist right now that could pull that off. Like you don't have songs on your album that you can afford to just hold and save for the album and not release to develop hype for the album. Yeah. The fact that she has multiple tracks that could be better than these tracks are crazy it's just crazy i was like i me personally well the lyrics that i saw mama crying i saw daddy lying and like feeling so yeah. responsible i just related as an eldest child and as, as an eldest daughter I felt very responsible for my house <laughs> felt very responsible for my <laughs> for my siblings like i i very much like would put myself aside to like make myself available and like helpful and all of that. So I connected to this song like immediately. I also did a reaction of that. That's on my channel. So I, yeah, love this well, track. You talk about connecting to the family aspects and, and she's opened up the album talking about incredibly important things in our country and incredibly important things about the history of our country and the present of our country. And then 16 characters, she gets into her personal life, which she also has addressed a little bit in American Requiem, but, but she continues to address the personal life and the family life on protector. And it's just a theme. It's a theme on this album that carries on and protector is entirely just about her and her children. Fuck me up. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's where I was watching where I, where I was like, I hope you're okay. Maya. <laughs> I was not. I was not. I could have cried for maybe 15 more minutes after that. I feel I'm very well. Um, I have tattoos for my siblings. Mm. I love butterflies. They're for me too, but I have three for my, my two brothers and my baby sister. I am I am their protector like 3,000%. So I, I, I obviously I don't want children for that reason. I already feel like, like, and I said it in my video and somebody was like, I never thought about it that way. Having children is like it's like your heart being outside your body. And I can't, ima- I can't imagine that. Not, not for me personally, I already feel that way with my siblings. So like, if I was to push a child into this world, Oh God help anyone. <laughs> it, would just, it would be madness. Um, and she adores her children. She mm-hmm. sent, she centers her children. I said that in my reaction to, they were the stars of that movie of the Renaissance movie. The kid, the babies were the stars. Um, and I just, I, I so appreciate how she's a mom first. Beyonce is a mother first. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't have, like on a personal level, I don't have this in my life and I never did growing up. And when I listen to artists make songs like this, and this is up there with some other songs that I've heard that are like mother to child, uh, that are, it's a very specific select few songs. My immediate thought is like, this is all I've ever dreamed of. Is this right? Is this right here? Like someone that's never had this to have a parent who's so 
openly willing to just do anything like under any circumstance to, you know, to be there for you, but like to be your protector and your projector, which I really was, I thought was beautiful. Like talking about those lines, I really enjoyed the, um, the, I first saw your face in your father's gaze line. Cause it makes me picture her giving birth and then Jay-Z's holding the kid. And then she's looking at Jay-Z's eyes as Jay-Z looks at the kid. And like, that's the first, cause mother doesn't always see the kid right away. Usually it's like the dad that'll like see the kid at, when it comes to births. Mm-hmm. And that's, she says in the song, that's the first time I saw you was through your father's eyes because he picked you up and was holding you. And that's very personal to put into a song. Like you're pretty much kind of talking about the the experience you had giving birth. Yeah. But I, um, it adds to the projector line too, because like you can kind of say like Rumi's eyes were projected off of Jay-Z's eyes. It makes the, it makes the projector line hit that much harder too. Like it's kind of like a double love that i didn't pick that up but i love that so much i it's the way (laughs) i'm gonna cry like thinking about it which is why i know i did why i didn't think about it during my reaction i immediately thought about like my siblings because if i thought about my mom i wouldn't have finished that video yeah yeah yeah, my 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 mom i i'm so i'm so fortunate to protect her oh god Oh, I spent all day with my mom today. I mm-hmm. spent all, I spent all day with her, and I was just telling her how grateful I am for her, and um, and all the time and space that she's given me to figure my shit out, and and grow as a person. I I feel extremely. I'm I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for my mama. I have, I have a protector. And it's not that like you need. Th- this song as a reminder but it doesn't hurt it doesn't have, have this song as a reminder it would have it definitely would have if i would have thought about i could have <laughs> in the moment listen to like first reaction hell no if i would have been like oh this is for my mama i would have bawled i'm very glad that my mind went extremely immediately to my siblings um well, imagine Rumi Carter having this song forever, like being able to run this track back in like twenty years. And my goodness, man! Oh God, that's why I said it's like a time capsule too. Like there's there's songs for occasions and like moments and like this shit feels timeless to me. It's another reason why I said it's her mm-hmm. best body of work. It feels timeless. This is gonna live on for a very long time. What's so specifically addressed? Like it's not just a generalized family. Like I love you, try like it's just so specifically. Ad- Rumi Carter's featured on the album. The name is right there. <laughs> <laughs> Rumi Carter's gonna be running those checks for a long time. She's gonna, she's gonna be sipping a uh, uh, juice out of her Grammy, like like <laughs> Blue was doing that one year. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, hopefully. It's not. Listen, let's, they- not, let's not do that because. <laughs> I agree. Listen, you already know I agree. Oh man, next year is gonna be the end of the world. I'm gonna throw up. Do you hear me? I'm gonna is oh I don't even think about it. But slipping into going from protector to my rose, which is for her son, sir. Mm. Sir Carter. Um, this is one of my favorite interludes. The His name is Sir. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it's the structure of this shit vocally is ridiculous. <laughs> The opening harmonies gave me Destiny's Child a little bit, like a little bit of a throwback. That, and it also gave me caroling, because I used to carol in college. Oh, okay. All right, a little Christmas time Beyonce jam. <laughs> like, it's very it's very bouncy and whimsical and, like, sweet. Um, but the sentiment of don't be ashamed of your flaws, so many roses right. to be picked, but none without thorns. I was like, Yeah! <laughs> Like, like center the fact that like we all have flaws, we all have things we want to work on. We are all human beings. It does not make us any less valuable. It does mm-hmm. not make us any less um, worthy. So I, I just I love that so much. That's like my second favorite interlude. I feel like yeah, those self love type of tracks coming from. And this is an interlude. It's really short. It's a few seconds. So I don't have a lot to say. I agree with everything you said. And yeah, those self love type tracks coming from somebody who like at the surface would seem so powerful. And so what could they be going through, possibly going through like, but meanwhile, they're breaking it down to you. Like I've got my thorns too. And 
I just want you to know that like you can embrace yours. I really appreciate a, tra a track like that. Absolutely. I ooh. This next track. When I saw Willie <laughs> When I saw that man on this track list, I was like, Oh, that's the that's our coolest country uncle, bro. Are like, are yeah. you joking? And we got his stamp of approval. <laughs> like it like in the beginning, you know, it's playing music from those of you guys might not know the Chitlin circuit. That's like the like a tour, basically, black artists used to go on because they weren't allowed on certain stages. So smart, um, so smart to incorporate that. Incredible. Yeah, all the all the artists in it: Sun House, Rosetta Tharp, yeah, Chuck Berry, the man who pioneered rock and roll, the father of rock and roll. A lot of people don't know Chuck Berry. You should. Um, and Roy Hamilton. It was. I was just like, oh, it's like again, time capsule. I don't have time to say that, but like introducing and like acknowledging all of these people who are trailblazers and paved the way but have been yeah, not removed but seemingly like erased from mm -hmm. these genres is so satisfying it's just yeah. so fucking satisfying uh -huh. um and that man said, hey, if you don't want to listen to this, then go on somewhere. Your opinion is irrelevant. Go to the jukebox. <laughs> yeah, go. exactly. Like, just if you got a negative, it's kind of like if you got a negative opinion, keep it to yourself type thing, listen, which I really appreciate as well, because he does not like this cool kind of go to your jukebox and listen to your own shit type of thing. Uncle Willie said, go spark you a joint. Go listen to some other shit then <laughs> and get up out of here because we are about to dance. In Texas, hold him. He's the he was the perfect person to intro that song just because yeah. of how iconic he is, and because that song like is as Texas and country and you know line dancing type song as any track on this album. Texas, hold him, the hit that you are. I Crazy. like <laughs> like the ad libs on this are like some of my favorite, just because it's like so inviting and it just feels like a good time. It's just a good time. Made me want to go grab my friends and go out and. And, and wear some boots and dance and shit. <laughs> that was really cute. Yeah, we've had the song for a while. Um, we probably talked about the song uh, a, quite a bit at this point. But yeah, overall, it's it, to me, it is like the most obvious hit. I'm not saying it's like my favorite song on the album, but it's the most obvious hit. Like out of Absolutely. every song on this entire album. Especially, and we'll get towards the back half where she really fucks with the genre a lot. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, because I cannot fucking wait to get to because that's like my favorite. That's my favorite stretch on this project. Is um, it really now? Oh, yes, Michael, the yes, taste. It is. Yes, it is. Yes, the it taste. is. Yes, it is. Because fuck a genre. Does fuck it? a genre. Fuck a genre. <laughs> <laughs> like Linda Martell said. She she gave we'll get there we'll get there um I love it <laughs> yeah Texas Hold'em was it was just the obvious lead single is the perfect choice is it's just an amazing like I I've had so much joy watching all kinds of people that I wouldn't expect to like make videos to a Beyonce song making videos to a Beyonce song to I'm not fighting with y'all for these tickets do you hear me I'm not <laughs> fighting with none of you people for these tickets. I appreciate that you enjoy the album. That's wonderful. Wait in the queue, okay? Y'all gonna have to wait in the queue. Uh, yeah, we we love to have you, but let us sit. Listen, don't count me. Blacks to the <laughs> me want to be like it's a new world. Blacks to the front. Come on, I'm sorry. You got <laughs> black people to the front. I'm sorry. Yeah. We got let let us in the building first, okay? Yeah. I'm happy that everybody's enjoying it. I'm happy that like people who haven't listened to Beyonce are like tapping in and recognizing how yeah. excellent she's been this entire time and is working their way back. That's incredible. Lots of TikToks of people being like, this is my first Beyonce listening album and I'm going to go back and listen. They're like listening to all of her stuff and I'm like, this is, yeah, I, lo I love this. I love all of that. In Texas Hold'em is a great like introduction. Yeah. I feel like if you didn't know, vocally eats. Again, she has a way of making things sound simple that simply are not. And then you try and sing it and you're like, ah, like, no. The range on this woman out of the front of the gate, just nasty. That's like the most the most consistent thing I've said listening to, especially listening to Four. But like so much of her music and even across this album is that she, like if you separate the instrumental and the vocal and you you separate them and you listen to like one without the other, if you listen to just the instrumental, you would never in a fucking million years be able to imagine placing that kind of vocal on top of that. It's 
It's such a talent. Like, it's such a skill. She is an instrument. We talk about that often. Like, all of the layering, all of... And that's the other thing. Strip it down, like you said, and listen to the instrumentals. And sometimes mm-hmm. they are just far more simple than you think. Little yeah. sounds, little different little things you think are probably the beat or Beyonce. No, she's the whoop in Texas Hold'em, right? Like, she's carrying... I love those ad libs. The ad libs yeah. are fire. My, some of my favorite on the project. Yeah, absolutely. Oh... <sighs> Let's take us into our next one. I was like, this could have been a single. Listen to me. That was my first first thought. My first thought was like, this follows Texas Hold'em. She honestly could have released this instead of Texas Hold'em. I'm glad she released Texas Hold'em. That's like the fucking crazy. She got her number one. A huge accomplishment, obviously, as the first black artist in in that country category. But like, Bodyguard could have been a single too. Bodyguard is great. I well, from what I've seen, and everybody's talking about it, might be a possible shout out to Dolly Parton, which would be cute. Is it a Whitney Houston shout out? Also, because because of, because of, the, because of the movie. Mm-hmm. Because of the movie. I, I haven't Bodyguard. looked into that, but I was I've never seen the movie, so I can't make a way to connect it. Yeah, Dolly Parton wrote "I Will Always Love You." Oh, so it could be like a three tie-in type. Sh- oh my god, I need to. I need to go watch that movie. Whitney Houston famously covered that song by Dolly Parton. By yeah. Me. A lot of people might not know that Dolly Parton wrote this song, but Dolly's pen is nasty. Okay, that pen, that pen is so real. Um, so people thought that was possible. Shout out to that. My favorite, the bass line in this song, like sick. This song has some of my favorite instrumentation. I don't, the whole. I don't know, it, man. It's yeah. It's just it's so it's so the groovy. Pian- the piano pulsing. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. I love this track too. It's like sultry and country at the same time. And sensual, very sensual. She mm-hmm. does this like slow. This this album does that because we talked about the opening. There's some slower tracks, definitely more country leaning, uh, and then obviously like Texas Hold'em as country as ever. And then she does like this slow transformation from country to Beyonce, mm-hmm. and, I, and, I, and I feel like that starts to happen in Bodyguard especially. <laughs> It said dipped on that little uh, like <laughs> I just love the way she play. I love the way she plays with her voice on this track as well. It just I can mm-hmm. just tell mom was having fun. She's having she having a yeah. very good time with all of these tracks, like vocally. And you had to have expect like and that's one thing I appreciate about this album, right? It's it's very long. Uh but it's not like crazy, stupid, like, you know three hours, two hours. It looks longer than it is because of the track length, the track amount. Mm -hmm. But when you really look at how many interludes and little short little, you know, 30 second songs there are, it's really only like 19 to 20 full length tracks. Uh, And I appreciate that. Like it's pretty heavy in the beginning. They're like, again, those first four tracks, she's she's insane for that, Mm -hmm. but she kind of lets you sort of start to have a good time with like a, with like a Texas Hold'em, obviously, a bodyguard, obviously, and we get to Jolene, obviously, we'll get there in a second, which is another good time, and, and yeah, like she 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 finds a way to bookend the album with really heavy shit, and in the middle have a whole bunch of have a good time shit. She's like, let's get all the rough emotions out, y'all. Just there's a lot of shit going on, a lot of talking yeah. going on. Y'all had a lot to say about me me stepping in doing this genre and stuff, so we had to get. All of that out of the way up top, clear up any misconceptions anyone might have, and now we can shake ass a little bit. Now I can't can shake a little ass. I can't get bodyguard out of my head right now. It's like it's like it's really stuck. In Shout there. out to Julius. We love Julius. He's been Beyonce's bodyguard for many, 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 many oh, years. Oh, okay. We love Julius. Shout out to Julius doing the Lord's work. And what's funny is <laughs> when, when Renaissance store was happening. There was like people in the pit that had signs for Julius and was saying hi to Julius. It's like, oh my God, hey Julius. And Beyonce's just standing on stage and she's just looking. She's just like, <laughs> I mean, he's doing important work. <laughs> he's doing very he important work. It's so funny. Like all of the TikToks of people uh, doing using bodyguard as a sound and he's bald. So like people like in a little bald filter. Like on their on their earpiece and like moving people out of the way. <laughs> I was cracking up. I love that too. I gotta look those up. <laughs> but after that, we slide right into none other than Dolly P. Dolly oh, part setting, setting the stage. Iconic cosign. I co- that that uh that Becky reference is fucking hilarious. Jolene and Becky need to go get brunch and talk about how they need to heal. <laughs> 
healing is needed. Okay. Mama said, Mama said, I know you had a little hussy of your own. I screamed. <laughs> that that reference is fucking hysterical. Oh man. It's like the shortest song. It's so quick, but like she gets to it. Yeah. She gets to it. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. This is Dolly Parton. This is Dolly. Dolly Parton. <laughs> like, I heard you had a little hussy of your own over there. I like <laughs> hilarious. So funny, so iconic. And then we slide right into Jolene. And, and I like that those are the two are the three. The, the the three people she chooses to sort of be spokesperson on the album, so to speak, like Willie Nelson, Dolly Parton, Linda Martell. Just how important the three of them have been to country music in general. Like I like that those have kind of been the ones that she chose to like you get your you know moment to introduce this here introduce that there absolutely yeah as soon as jolene started i knew what was going to happen i knew i so i had never heard jolene the original going into this i'd never heard it oh i knew God. but i knew it's such an iconic song yeah. that i i knew it was about jolene stealing someone's man i knew that it's been like referenced in like comedy sketches and all that stuff i just yeah, knew it yeah yeah um, but I didn't know the song. I knew there was like Jolene, Jolene. I knew it went something like that, but I never heard the actual song. I listened to the song really quick. And then like like right before I listened to Beyonce's cover, because I wanted to see how Beyonce, you know, changed it or whatever she decided to do with it. And as soon as like that, the first couple lines that Dolly's begging Jolene not to take her man. Dolly is pleading. Begging. No. To just you ruin my whole life if you do this. Oh my goodness. I knew there was no fucking way Beyonce was going to do any of that. <laughs> Beyonce, listen, Dolly is pleading and begging. Beyonce is giving you a final warning. You don't want the smoke. <laughs> I love that. So I, much. I jumped up. I jumped. I was like, girl, you don't want no heat with me, Jolene. <laughs> I was, I was oh. like, girl, it, and I thought about it and I was like, you might not know that because this is like, you know. Beyonce lore or whatever, but I was I was listening to the lyrics and I was like, this might be from the perspective of her mom actually, because she was talking about um, being a, a Creole banji bitch from Louisiana and that's where her mama is from. Oh, um, okay. And there's a lot of a lot of things going around that we've heard like over the years in regards to like the relationship between her mom and her dad and stuff. So I feel like this might apply to her mom as well. I was gonna say she said she raised that man. Jay Z's a lot older. Yeah. But I mean, she could still have, Jay-Z could have been like really immature when they got together. I don't know. That too. That, could, that too. Hey, there's a lot of 30 year old immature ass motherfuckers that need to be raised by some of these women out here. It's real. It's damn so it's, it could have still been the same situation. Cause she said, yeah, I raised that man. I raised his kids. It could be. That's I didn't think about that, but you're absolutely well, correct. Well, I didn't even, yeah, I, I caught the Creole bitch line. I did not think about like, Oh wait, but she's from Houston, Texas. Are yeah, her any... mo her mom is Creole, and her mom was born in Louisiana. That's interesting. So it could be like a her mom thing. And there's a lot of like the like her mo references to her mom. There's a couple and references to her dad. Also a couple on the album. It's just so it's so cohesive, man. It this is. whole fucking project is incredibly cohesive. And thinking about Miss Tina, her mama, I was like, you don't want no heat with Miss Tina. This Miss Tina could be. The best <laughs> oh, yeah? Miss Tina. Miss Tina, no. Miss, Miss Tina is that, <laughs> that girl. She she will take you down a, a few notches. Just real cute and classy. Like, Wasn't it? Isn't it perfect then that the next song she's talking about killing a couple motherfuckers? I was in, like, did she in, work Jolene and the man? She She definitely killed a woman in the beginning and a man at the end. She That's what I caught from this. In the beginning, like, she's the beginning. She's talking about, yeah, she's talking about a woman. She, I ripped your dress. You're all black and blue. Look what you made me do. Yeah, like I, you make me snap. Then all of a sudden, I'm like my father. But at the end, she's like luring a man in, and then once he's lured in, she she attacks. It might be that. It might be that man that was cheating on her. Ooh, I didn't, I, see, I didn't even think about the two being connected, but it makes sense. And then also the next one, spaghetti. Woo! Then, not yet. I'm not gonna go there yet, but there was, <laughs> I didn't know. I know, like I knew what spaghetti westerns were, and I referenced that in my vi my video, my initial reaction to this album. But I didn't know she was intentionally mo like inspired by spaghetti westerns by Clint Eastwood, Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese. She watched um the recent Killers of the Flower Moon movie, and she was inspired by that. 
And it makes daughter make that much more sense that she watched some of these spaghetti westerns and were inspired by that to make uh, a couple of these songs here. Yeah, it's a clear. This is a, a a favorite, a favorite, favorite, a very high favorite of mine. I still haven't ranked this album. I have nothing to tell you guys. I don't know. I like, so, like, so like for real. I so love hard. all. I love all of these tracks for different reasons. I, I guess I'll tell tell you guys which ones I I've been listening to the most. Um, Daughter is definitely one of them. The lyrics are some of my favorite on the project. Um, the, the luring. She's like, I sashayed my dress. Did my yeah. best impression of a damsel in distress. I was like. Wait, you got to speak to the opera. The Italian aria. <laughs> Caro mio bene. Okay? <laughs> Me, as, 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 a, <laughs> as a performing arts child, I went to performing arts school, and that was one of our mandatory songs. I feel like it's mandatory for all performing arts uh, students if you have a vocal focus. Um, I sang it in my reaction, not properly, but I sang it. <laughs> Um, because I was like, oh, she did this for me. <laughs> I was like, where did this come from? Where did this come from? And I was just so happy. I was like, girl, I feel more connected, girl. You, yes, this is one of those, one of those tracks. She sang it gorgeously. Every, everything was pronounced perfectly because Beyonce, the breath control, because I took breaths in between the lines. You're not supposed to. And Beyonce did not. <laughs> She she sang that shit all the way through on one breath, and I just I was in awe. Ugh. Yeah, I've never um, I've never heard opera in person. I'm almost certain I've only heard it like in as in passing and movies. And this made me as much as anything like want to go see an opera. Except it wouldn't be Beyonce, so I don't know if it hit the same. Opera's opera's beautiful. It's not. It's not for everybody. But I was just like, she threw this in the middle. Just threw it in the middle, like this, man. <laughs> literally like, in the middle, in the middle of talking about killing these two motherfuckers. It's crazy. I love the imagery of that because I feel like, eh, in some of the Western movies, my dad also really loves Western movies. So I've seen a lot of Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. I've seen. I've seen a lot of movies like that, and. And in times where like, and Quentin Tarantino does that too. When there's like shootouts and stuff. And yeah, it's yeah, like, it like, like Jango There's, Jango Jango there's yeah. a little bit of opera in the back. There's. Yeah, there like, is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, I I was like, oh, not a soundtrack to the woman's death. Like, he was like, I, that was just me. I was like, oh, she murking her now. Now she's being murked like in this area right now. During that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. You know what's. Um, <laughs> Where what are we like in the middle now? Kind of in the middle of the album. What's daughter? Yeah. Track twelve, track eleven. We're in the middle ish. There's a lot of shorter tracks coming up. Yeah. Uh are we gonna get visuals for this album or for this act? Listen to me. Or, I, or I this, believe I believe era? we're getting a movie. I believe we're getting a movie once the third act is done. I believe that visuals are done for both of the first two I acts. Think they're done. I think they are. I think that we're getting a movie. It sounds like a fucking movie. This, this this song needs visuals because of what you just said. You just described it, the opera going on while the murking is going on in the background. Yeah. The song needs visuals. I believe it has them. I believe she's holding on to them. She's a, uh, She knows. She knows <laughs> we want them. She's not going to do us like she did with the Formation Tour, I promise. I don't think that she's going to do that because of all the clips and like everything that's been using for promo, like... I'm like there's there's visuals. It's a movie. I believe it's a it's a movie. I think it's a movie. If I'm right, then y'all can come back here and tell me how I was right later. But <laughs> I think well, I think it's going to be a, all three acts are going to be in one movie. That would be, oh my god, that would be crazy. Wow. wow. It's in, but it's believably crazy, right? I've learned not to wow. um underestimate or I can I'll never be able to overestimate Beyonce. <laughs> Like it, it could be the most off the wall shit. She probably gonna do it. I think it's gonna be a movie. I'm overall thinking about that. No, li <laughs> no literally, honest. literally, yeah. Uh, spaghetti. You seemed very excited when I said the word spaghetti. Uh, Linda Martell's first appearance and Shabuzi. You want to know what's really funny? Mm -hmm. This is T. My best friend is getting married. One of my best friends is getting married. I went to her bridal shower last weekend. Um. And a couple of her other bridesmaids were like girls we also went to high school with, but I hadn't seen them in years. So we're like sitting down talking and catching up and stuff. And um, we were talking about YouTube and I was like, I just did my Cowboy uh, Carter reaction. Like um, it's being edited and stuff right now. 
one of the girls shouted to Stephanie, hey, Stephanie. Uh, she's a bridesmaid, too. She was like, oh, my cousin is on that album, Shabuzi. I was like. Cousins with Shibuzi, who's on two tracks. She was like, "Oh yeah, that's my blood cousin. Like my dad and his mom are so you know siblings." I was that's like, "Crazy." She Shout was like, to- "Yeah, the family group chat was blowing up the other day because I was like, girl, yeah." yeah I was like, a- "I kn- I didn't know who to- who Shibuzi was, but he's on my favorite tracks on the project." So tell him I said, "What's good?" <laughs> <laughs> So I said, can I get, hey, <laughs> me trying not to be pressed. Be like, listen, um, this, this love song, talent. this song, there's a couple things that are really important here. It's, it starts out with Linda Martell, who's an incredibly important figure. Probably the most important uh, feature on the album, I'd say, in my opinion. I believe so as well. Absolutely. Um, the whole album shifts at this point. The whole album shifts. It's a fucking shift. This is, I mentioned earlier, Beyonce's like, there's the post, like it's not a country album, it's a Beyonce album. It's a country album for the first half. But at this point, it's a Beyonce album all the way. Linda Martell says herself, genres are a funny little concept, aren't they? In theory, they have a simple definition that's easy to understand, but in practice, some may feel confined. Um, I have a, I have a hot take. This is a country song. This okay, a, take, a, take it away. This is this is a country song. Um, I give you one. I give you one example. You can't tell me that Nelly isn't a country artist. He was already a country that's artist before. Country grammar. Before he hooked up with Baby or a song Cruise, like he was already a country artist. It's not hot in here. It's hot in her. Okay. <laughs> so like Southern rap is country. Outcast. Uh, Three Six Mafia sounds country as hell. It's it's I believe it's a country out al- uh, it's a country country album it's a country song spaghetti is a country song it's 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 raw like southern rapping I ain't it I left out of my skin <laughs> <laughs> the first time I played this shit in the car I had to pull over I'm not exaggerating I had to pull over because the bass was She's, knocking and she starts rapping <laughs> like what the, you got, the bass, you the better bass pull was, over. The bass was knocking in a way that was unsafe for me to drive on the highway. So I pulled over <laughs> just to listen to it. Obviously, the album passed the car test, but. Um, oh, my God, it did. Yeah, it did. Um, I love it. It's the, the grit in her voice when she's like, uh, at the snap of my fingers, I'm Thanos. I'm Thanos. <laughs> I'm th- <laughs> Oh, uh, this man. Oh, what a <laughs> this This song fucks you up. If you're listening in order. And it's your first listen. My God, does this song fuck you up? I love it. I love it so much. And then the come get everything you came for. Y'all asked for this. Y'all ordered this shit hot, ready, fresh out the oven. Y'all was talking so much shit. Talking about I can't do country. How about this? How about I'm going to spit like we do down in the South? Well, she said, in the kitchen, cooking up them chickens, extra leg, I ain't even trying to kick it, cunty, country, petty, petty, petty. She is petty, petty. All the same to me, plain Jane spaghetti. I'm obsessed with this woman, man. I was like, and, uh, and there, were so, there were several moments on this project that just felt like teasing to me. That felt like teasing to me. The the petty, pet, like, girl, yeah. <laughs> She's like, listen. Y'all, y'all tried to box me out. Now I'm gonna put the, all of this hip hop influence, all this southern country rap, in on this album, and y'all gonna have to sit and listen to it. <laughs> I, th- I think Linda Martell even speaks to what you're saying, though. Like she, if you, I'm not mincing her words. She word for word says, like genres are a funny concept, aren't they? Concept. Focus on the word concept. Yeah. In, in theory, focused on that. In theory, they have a simple definition that's easy to understand. But in practice, Linda Martell, the actual musician, is actually practicing these genres, not the not the reader. Uh, some may feel confined. Those some aren't Beyonce, obviously, aren't Nelly, aren't uh, Outkast. Like they they know how to expand the the country genre and practice the country genre, make music in the country genre. But also have it be whatever else you want to call it. You Absolutely. can't box in Beyonce. That was like my biggest note on That's this. That's what song. I said. I was like, you can't tell me what to do. I'm still country, and so is this song. So like, just eat it. 
my ooh no my favorite can i tell you like my favorite one of my favorite parts of this song is how to the moon how to the moon how to the moon <laughs> That's my, i was like oh i like shabuzi's voice actually his voice fit so well on this he ate that was great as well well she she managed because she's on a little bit of a run here of just like having a good time showing off like you said mm. teasing um middle of the middle of the album is kind of a party but she talks about some real shit in the end of the track here because she says outlaws with me they're gonna shoot kind of speaks to again like that spaghetti western thing but she's talking about her own culture because she says we gonna ride for every member that we lose mm-hmm. and to me that is almost definitely speaking to every member of the black community we lose because we're talking about like cops being involved at this point yeah and she's talking about she she literally says play it cool know the lawman is watching me every time i move they because I mean, you know, mass there's no, policing. Yeah. There's no breaking that down. <laughs> He's very yeah. self-explanatory. So she managed to slip that in in the track where you're having a good time, and all of a sudden it's oh shit. And at the end, it don't matter the charges. I ain't telling the truth. <laughs> we don't snitch. We don't snitch out here. It don't matter what the charges are. It don't matter. My lips are sealed. I ain't eating no snacks. I ain't drinking nothing. Y'all can keep all that shit out of the room. It don't matter. I ain't saying shit. I was obsessed. That's my favorite song on the album. That I love. If I didn't say that, that's my number one. Number one. It's my number number one. one. That's a good choice. That's a really good choice. It hits me everywhere that I need to be hit. I get my little R and B tees. I get Beyonce on her gangster shit. I get I get everything that I want out of that track. Um, That's the first song I play when I've been getting in my car these last like three four days. (laughs) <laughs> it's the first shit I played. Me driving down the driveway. I ain't in a gang, but I got shoes and I'm bang, bang. <laughs> Like, just, I was just like Beyonce, please. <laughs> please, woman. Um, it's, it's perfect, bro. This shit is perfect. <laughs> all right. I don't, I'll, I probably, I feel like I have the least to say about the next song than all of the songs. Really? I don't have a lot for Alligator Tears. Again, I have only heard this album three times. Mm-hmm. I definitely need to listen to this album more. Three times is not enough. It just I mean, it just came out. I listened to it late. I didn't even get to listen to it the day it came out because, again, content creator, I was trying to like make the time to listen to the album for the first time with everybody. Right. I, didn't, I didn't get that opportunity until Tuesday or Wednesday, which is like three days ago. So I just listened to this album. Um I might have more to say about Alligator Tears on more listens, but I don't have a ton. I just don't have a ton. I, I, it's not that I don't like it. I just don't have a ton to say about it. It's a favorite of mine. Oh, wow. Okay. It, it, Speak was, on. A, it was an immediate favorite because I enjoy, I love singing this one. If I didn't say that as well, that's my, mm-hmm. this is one of my favorites to sing the dissonance and the, and the minor melodies and this shit. It, it scratches a very, very <laughs> very nice place for me it it's one of my favorite things sonically it gave me a little fleetwood mac um to be heard later down the line a little bit um an interpolation of fleetwood mac but i just love i love the track i think vocally it does a lot it's not going to be palatable for a lot of people i don't think um just because of the dissonance and the clashing but that's one of my favorite things in music ever uh when you can mm-hmm. clash and the shit sounds great and purposeful it's like uh i love it i love that track a lot actually yeah i i just i need to listen to it more that's really that's all i have really that's fine um do you want to move on yeah let's do it smoke hour 2 is it is just I just love that there's multiple cosigns, but legends. On yeah, this, it's, on, it's just a cl- another clear cosign. And my, y'all might not listen to Beyonce, but that changes today because I'm here to put you on to some good <laughs> shit. He was like, you might not know good shit until somebody puts you on. He was like, that's why I'm here. So this next track is just for fun by Beyonce. <laughs> he's yeah, it's kind of similar to to mm-hmm. he's a little he's just kind of similar to his first feature. He's just a little bit more unhinged here. Yeah, because he lit. <laughs> yeah, you're it's right. You're right. Smoke, it's smoke hour too. That's our stoner country uncle. Okay. I it it leads to one of my favorite songs in the album, just for fun. It's That's so one good. of my favorites as well. Top six. Period. For, for me, it, it's like it's up there. It's really high up there. Will do you know Willie Jones is? 
I believe his name sounded familiar to me. I feel like he was on one of the shows. He was on X Factor. Like X Factor. X Factor. Okay, I, I didn't know if it was X Factor or the Four, but yeah, okay, was, X Factor. Yeah, he was on X Factor and Country Artist, and I'll not, like I didn't even I didn't know until I posted my video and someone commented like. I've been rocking with Willie Jones forever. I'm so glad I see him on a Beyonce album ever since he was in the X Factor audition. And I was like, wait, X Factor audition? They clicked right away. I, 2012. Oh, and wow. I, I remember like it was yesterday watching his audition over and over and over and over and over again because he comes out and he just has, he's this, he's so young and he has this incredibly deep country voice uh, and he smashes the audition. He finished in the top 10 or something like that. He, like he made it to the finals of the show. Okay. Um, I just remember the audition blowing me away forever, like something that really stood with me for a long time. So from to go from that to like being on a Beyonce album, um, one of the most important songs on the album, in my opinion, uh, was just it's got to be a big moment in his life. I and he sounded excellent. This is my first time hearing him, and I was like out the gate. I was like, oh, his tone is is gorgeous, and he, I, I loved his voice. I thought he did a great job. This this song is very triumphant to me, and I love yes. that it's called "Just for Fun." Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay. ki- it's it's kind of like her speaking to the, the album making process, perhaps, or like her intention behind wanting to make not her intention because her intention for making this music is so much bigger um, than the actual um, just making the music of it all. But like she says in the beginning, "I'm going out, I'm going all out just for fun. I am the man." I know it. It's like y'all can't tell me nothing. Y'all can't tell me I can't make this music. Literally, man. I'm the man. I'm the man. <laughs> like Beyonce, Beyonce is loved and, and celebrated and, and revered by so many men, and rightfully so because of the work that she's put in and like the type of artist that she is. You trying to minimize me and box me out and make me feel unwelcome in this space is, is not only a mistake, but and in, you're incapable of doing it. <laughs> you can't. You can't do that. You're. You're not. And I like that she's like, time heals everything. I yeah. don't need anything. Hallelujah. I was just <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because she this shit her, this shit did hurt her at one point. Yeah, that I I watched that. I remember watching that shit live, and I only watched it because Beyonce was performing. But watching the performance of the CMA is live, and you could see the moment where she on her face, where she realizes that they're not fucking with her, that a lot of people aren't. You could see it in her face, and that hurt my feelings, and it wasn't even me. So I know that, like, I, I know it impacted her. Like, she's a human being. She's Beyonce, but she's <laughs> a human. She's a human being, and I'm sure she feels like we all doesn't matter who you are we all have feelings of inadequacy we all feel like we aren't worthy like of something sometimes so no. like seeing that wash over her face like it shook me a little bit but also reminded me again of her personhood and that just because look at everything that she's done everything that she's accomplished and still i mean she closes it out born in darkness who brings the light i just need to get through this or get used to it it's the get you. I don't want to get you. I don't like the. I, I know what she. I know what she means. But like, we shouldn't have to get used to this oh. shit. We shouldn't have to. We shouldn't. We should oh. be used to it by now. It's I'm painful. still. I'm still not, bro. I can acknowledge I, racism. I experience all the time. Like people doing it. It's just. It's. We shouldn't have to get used to it. But I understand what she means. Like I, I completely understand. Like what she's coming from. Like the feeling of of. Again, all this work that she's done, and she's used she's used to being dismissed by now. Most Grammy award winning artist, but never won album of the year. Like she she's used to to being dismissed in certain ways. Yeah. Um. But I feel like that one like hurt her different because because of where she's from, man. And she is country, and she sings pop and r&b and everything else but doesn't change her roots it don't change where she comes from and she grew up going to the rodeos and performing in pageants and all types of stuff um involved in her city out in texas so like it's just that hurt too (laughs) that hurt too everything you're saying you know even with the pain that comes with a lot of it and devastating line like or just get used to it um i mean all of it makes it one of my favorite songs just from the emotion of it all and the honesty of it all 
But like when Willie Jones comes in, she found the perfect collaborator for this song. She found somebody who relates to a lot of her yes. struggle in this genre, in this industry, trying to make the music that they want to make and be accepted for making the music that they want to make and not judged and feel like accepted in these inner circles of like a big award show. And man, Willie's Willie's verse. I'm going down south just for fun. I am the man. I know it. And everywhere I go, I hide my face. From the Cowboys and the Rodeo Circus. Like, he's putting himself in these spaces because he is a country artist, but he feels like he's hiding his face or he feels like the need to hide his face because he doesn't feel accepted or like he belongs. That's what we in the black community call code switching. <laughs> One of them things where he's like trying to be, trying to, to feel comfortable or like make people around you quote unquote comfortable i hate all of that shit but it's something mm -hmm. that we deal with very often is feeling like we can't be completely ourselves um yeah. it won't be received or we won't be looked at like it, like he's a country artist but he's still a black man i don't know where he's from but it it it's all of that. It's all of that wrapped into it, plus the music, plus still wanting to be a form of like representation. Um, mm -hmm. cause I'm sure he knows how how important he is in that space. Shabuzi as well, and like all the girls and everybody, like like I I, I hope they know how Willie, important Willie Jones is from Louisiana. There you go. Just had just all oh, the sentiment behind like both her and his verse. I'm just like, we shouldn't have to deal with this bullshit. Mm -hmm. We just should not have to deal with this bullshit. We should be able to exist in our fullness, um, and not be questioned. It gives like you know, what used to piss me off. You wear like a graphic tee and it has a band on it, like, oh, you like that band? Name three songs. Fuck off <laughs> what that's a that's like somebody would ask you that if you had the tea on yeah they're like oh you like because i used to i lived in hot topics so i'd have all types of band tees and i loved all american rejects and dance yeah and dance gavin dance and like that was my shit and you don't like, look like the rest of us so why are you wearing that t-shirt exactly you don't look like the rest of us so why are you in this country space like why do you do you really like country music man like you just yeah. shouldn't have to explain yourself and like your existence to anyone. Mm -hmm. You just you just shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to hide your face. Like that's that's what he he said it. He said it. He said the loud words there. He said the loud words. He's speaking for Beyonce. He's speaking for himself. And man, I like can't, I can't get enough of this track. I cannot get enough of this track. I love it. It's it's beautiful and the touch of like gospel with the backgrounds mm -hmm. and the choir. It sounds full. It sounds warm towards the end, and that's what makes it feel like triumphant. Because some of the lyrics are like really sad, bro. But it, it's still like a time heals everything. I don't need anything. I love that's mm -hmm. my, my my favorite line um, mm -hmm. because it's true. And they both say it. I mean, it's just really powerful coming from both of like both of them repeating that line there. The born in darkness, who brings the light? Yeah. Obsessed, obsessed. And you know what else I'm obsessed with? So you, yeah, I might say nothing. The next two songs, <laughs> you go. <laughs> it's okay. I two most wanted is a favorite of mine. This is this has Miley Cyrus featured on it, and she soared vocally. I knew she would. Like as soon as I saw her name on it, I was like, "Oh, they this is gonna be great," and they sound incredible together. Um, I also think that this could be a good uh radio hit as well. Um, it's just a gorgeous song, man. I don't got a whole lot of notes for this either. It's a gorgeous song. I love to sing this one as well. I bounce back and forth between harmonies. I need somebody to help ground me because I just be all over the place because it's so, it's just so pretty and there's so many things to sing. Miley belting her damn ass off at the end with Beyonce. I'm just like, ah, I, I'm so happy for her as well. Very happy for Miley. Uh, the, this, <laughs> these are my these are these are two great vocalists, two of my favorite vocalists. I would like to remove both of these tracks from the album personally. Really? Yeah, I don't I don't like either of these songs. Oh, most, most wanted or Levi's jeans. I look at them in the same way, and it's not even because like, sure, it's easy to say like yeah, they have like the biggest feature. You could even say like the feature doesn't exactly 
match with a lot of the other more intentional features. I don't really care that much about that. I just don't really like the songs. And I so I didn't really feel like I articulated myself well on my initial listen to why I didn't like the song. And then somebody commented something about not about why they didn't like the song. And I was like, I think that's part of why I don't like the song. And they said that it feels like they're singing at each other. Like it feels like it's like a contest. It doesn't feel like it's very intentional in the harmonies or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, It doesn't feel like a proper duet. It just feels like they're kind of like, we're both great singers. We're both just going to like see who can out sing each other. And that's kind of how it feels a little bit. And I mean, we can wait till we get to Levi's jeans. I'll talk more about that one. But I feel very similar about both of these tracks. I don't not like these. These aren't bad songs. The thing mm. is, like, this album is so great. This album is fucking perfect. I'm not going to hear a better. Like, I don't really care what I listen to the rest of the year. I'm not going to hear a better album than this. It's that good. Bro, that's what I you ruined. I'm sorry. Like, for real. This is this culturally. It's everything too, else is too. It's, it's, it's too important. It's too intentional. There's too much going on that's like, like, that matters as far as like current ongoing things in our country and <laughs> things that are a reflection of the past in our country that matter today like it's everything is just too important and neither of these tracks have like speak to much of that importance which is fine like she's got tracks on here and i think beyonce's intention is and we're gonna get to a song later where she speaks on it is i'm letting you know there's a lot of shit going on in our country that's fucked up and a lot of shit that went on in our past that's fucked up but i do need you to have a good time right now because shit is fucked up I need you to have a good time. I'm going to help you have a good time. We're going to get to a song that's probably my favorite song on the album that she, like, that represents that entire sentiment. Let so loose. Am I right? So I'm fine. Yes. So <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with having songs in the album that, like, literally are just to have a good time, which I feel like, especially Levi's Jeans, Most Wanted is a little bit more of a ballad than Levi's Jeans. But, like, they, I just wasn't moved. That's all. Every song on this album moves me significantly except these two songs. And, okay. alligator, and alligator Tears, which I need to go back to. Fair enough. Fair Those enough. are the only three songs where I wasn't, like, out of my body, this is incredible. But that's crazy because there's 27 tracks on here. So, the, like, <laughs> none of that is, like, a knock, really. It's just more so, oh, these two songs don't feel like they fit with the rest kind of a vibe for me. I get that. There was, some, there was a lot of discourse online about the fact that Miley and Post Malone were on this project to begin with. I didn't see, I didn't see any of that, but I'm sure that was all very toxic. <laughs> it, was a, it was a whole lot of, oh, so she went and grabbed – Two people who are, you know, <laughs> culture, cap- cult, culture cap- vultures a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she she scooped them up and brought them back over. Is like, hey, come come sing this shit. And <laughs> and I kind of I kind of like the concept behind it. <laughs> like, okay, get you licked back. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm not yeah. mad at, I'm not really mad at that part. Just me personally, I just not I'm not as invested in that part of it as I guess other people are. Maybe that's why they might not like the songs. For me, it's more so just. Just listening to the songs. They just didn't move me the way their other songs did. No, I feel you. I feel like Two Most Wanted is, it, it's like a I'm your sister. We're our sister's keepers type song. It's that. It could also apply to like relationships and stuff. Mm. Levi's Jeans, actually. It's not one of my favorites. It's not, it's not one of my favorites, but I like it enough to like listen to it because it feels good. And I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's not a bad song. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a bad song. Post sounds pretty good on it for what like the song's asking that him to do surprised me because we have yeah it's like a new th- well he's gonna make a country album apparently but that's like a new thing for him kind I, of i was like oh his voice sounds real clear and very warm i wasn't expecting any of that i i, I was pleasantly surprised but fun fact if you didn't know uh levi levi's jeans was one of the only major brands that would dress destiny's child and they did um their first campaign with them for low rise jeans um, designers did not want to dress curvy black country girls from Texas. They just did. They didn't want to. Levi's did. Um, so I love that she named it Levi's jeans. And I love like in the song posted, you don't need designer to look good and da, 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 like a call back to that. And she's like, my designer is my white tee and my jeans. And like Beyonce being in her jeans is a very, um, uh, if Beyonce has a brand at all, you look at Crazy in Love and she's wearing a white tank and yeah. jean shorts. And like Beyonce is very consistently throughout her career 
been the country girl wearing jeans and tops and like all of that stuff and being very cute and chill. But that's that was designer. That is designer. So she's like, I'm content in these jeans and you can take them off. <laughs> <laughs> if you so choose, you know? Yeah. I mean, she, the, she, um, I was like, oh, well, we were going to get a little sexual at some point, right? But then, like, Desert Eagle came and she knocked that shit out the point. So, <laughs> the, the we'll Gina, get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get, we'll get it there. Ooh. Levi Jeans is, like, PG compared to that shit. Indeed. Very much so. <laughs> Very much. I was like, it's a good nasty track, you know? It's, it's yeah. a little, we can slow dance and, and drink a beer. I don't I will never. Like, Levi Jeans could come on and I'm never going to be like, skip that shit. That's bad. It's, yeah. gro it's groovy. They both, obviously, Beyonce always sounds great, but like there's nothing to not like about it it's more of just like an out of place from thing for me i feel you next is my favorite interlude on the project this is my favorite um version of her voice on the whole on the whole album just like See? her singing for the yeah. whole minute whatever minute and a half two minutes whatever it is my oh my god i could just listen to her sing for the, like on repeat in that song over and over again this is another one i'm studying currently the harmonies in the back of that shit are crazy mind numbing mind <laughs> numbing um, this is this is insane it's my favorite it's my favorite instrument uh, uh interlude on the project the flamenco guitar playing with it as well like just uh, uh, i ain't got nothing else to say it just sounds fucking incredible yeah, that's really all it is. This is my favorite stretch on the album, from Flamenco to the end. I love that for you. Me too. Flamenco to the end. This is uh, nine tracks, eight tracks, nine tracks. Oh, there's like three short ones in there, but Flamenco is one of the short ones. Um, this is this album is, I, it's beyond perfect from here. I can't say enough. Like this is such, <laughs> it's such a good time. <laughs> After Flamenco, we slide right in. So the next interlude is the Linda Martell show. If you don't know Linda Martell, um, she trailblazer. She's the first black woman to perform at the Grand Old Opry. Um, she <coughs> was in like R and B and then transferred over to country and again dealt with some of the same things that Beyonce dealt with. Um, I believe she only made one album. I feel like I I, I believe she only made one album. Feel free to correct me if you know in the comments. Um, but she introduces even more genre bill <laughs> genre bending. She, she reminds you, sure. She's like, Hey, we're back with more genre bending. Just like, here you go. It's coming. Get ready. And then it leads to my favorite song on the album. Fucking Yaya. How did she put this shit together, man? Oh my God. How does this exist? I, I'm just shaking my head. Cause I'm trying to, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. <laughs> how, does, how does this exist? First of all, if there's any preview for the fact that we're getting a tour, it's in here. Welcome to the Cowboy Carter Act Two. Stop! Oh, I'm gonna throw up. She announces that shit like she like she's gonna run it back on every single leg of the tour. Oh my to god! Me, this is the opener. Oh! You can't say things like this. I'm she's, hey, she said it. She said it. You can't bring it to life. We're talking about the tour. And she's like, Beyonce's been so, especially like her recent tour, she's been so infamous for like in, the incorporation of the, the band and the huge like marching band and all that. And I she's can't even like, picture this shit live. She says it in the song and she's like, Tom, please. And she's like, you know, rodeo, uh, rodeo chitlin circuit. And then she says, uh, we clapping, we drum it. Like she is organizing the band to get the show ready. And that's why this song is going to lead off the tour that's coming. Didn't she? Didn't didn't she? Um, something go on her website like yesterday or the day before. What? She put something up that said a like, cowboy Carter or something. It said always been country. I don't know. That's what it said. But she it it was something. I, I thought maybe it was gonna lead to a tour announcement. Maybe. Uh, listen, my pockets aren't ready, Beyonce. Don't do it. I'm begging <laughs> you. I'm be I'm begging and pleading. <laughs> we drumming. We drumming. It's so fun. Like, the, the fact that it makes so much sense is what's fucking me up right now. Because if this was the opener on tour, we I can't even... I, it would have to be the opener. I would be depleted. It would have to be the it's I so, would be it's depleted so of all my energy if this was, like, later in the... I, it like, this gotta be first. And I think that... Oh, my God. Why should be right? You guys, it has these comments, like, could come back. And once it's announced... If, <laughs> this, song, that, this, song, this song... This song... This song is the album this song incorporates her name her lineage more problems with america it's it's this out this song is the album 
Like the song represents the entire whatever she wanted to get across to us. It's all in Yaya. Whole lot of red in that red, white, and blue. That's my. I mean, it's the best. It's my favorite off the whole album. It's, it says everything. I like the um, Nancy Sinatra in the bin, uh, in the beginning. Boots are made for walking. I caught that immediately. I was like, yeah. But also later, Beach Boys. Beach Boys. Good vibrations. All the I'm looking for the oh my god yeah 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 <laughs> yeah she's having a good time on this track man just it's fucking crazy. around just fucking around yeah yeah just yeah around that's, that's all she's doing on this track that's all she's doing on this track heavy Tina Turner influence again like vocally but also in my reaction I said James Brown I don't know how familiar you are with James Brown but he would be jumping around and singing and yelling and stuff and Only after he like... would lose his mind somebody would come out with a cape or a blanket and just throw it on top of him he'd be laying on the laying on the stage he'd fall out it's all the drama and the background singers would come up and like fan him like this and then somebody would come out with a cape and lay it over him oh see so yeah i don't i i don't i gotta educate myself the energy know. it's the, it gave me all of that energy like because i'm gonna fall out after this shit is over i <laughs> yeah. just have the energy yes. to yes. perform this shit is yes. crazy and it's it gonna, gonna, have, gonna start I, too i think you're correct i think this is gonna be the first song and oh i'm gonna <laughs> 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 I didn't even process that, but you're so fucking. You're so right. You're this, so right. This album, this song, I mentioned earlier how like she's kind of sandwiched everything in this project a little bit to be like really serious shit up top and and the end and like a middle of just like really having a good time. That's why I said this song is the album because this song is that. The song opens up with really serious shit. History can't be erased. My family lived and died in America. The Beyonce thing, which just speaks to like the uh, uh, black people not being able to get their birth certificate back in the day, and the, there was like a spelling error, and that's why she's Beyonce. And there's the story about that. And there's the then obviously she says like the the whole whole lot of red and that white and blue, which I want to get to more of as we get to the end of this track and we talk through this. But after that, she gets into okay. Are you tired of working time and a half for that pay? Which speaks to a lot of America. I just pray. I pray we don't crash. Keep my Bible on the dash because we're racing through this song and having a good old time. We got to keep the faith. And then the rest of this song till the end is a fucking party. It's a fucking party. It's like a lot of the things, the Beach Boys thing, like she's in and out of just having the best time in this song. I don't have, I don't have, I have no other notes except. I shook ass. I wrote it down. <laughs> I, sh- I, I couldn't. I literally could not stop moving. I couldn't yeah. stop moving, man. And I feel like that's the purpose of it. So well, she, she, like I said, she opens up with that whole lot of red and that white and blue. And she says other things like history can't be erased. Are you looking for a new America? And again, this is her trying to rally us and bring us together, right? So you know, these- going to lead the revolution. <laughs> Y'all need to <laughs> wake might. up. Oh my God. This is what art is for. Four. Oh my god no for real this is what art is for and mm-hmm. art reflects the times art reflects what's going on in life right now right now this country is in fucking shambles this country is in shambles democrats are purposely trying to lose their campaign it's all ty- it's just all types of horrible shit going on and and we all feel like there's no way of fixing it we're all upset with our options and choices in regards to like voting for who's going to be leading this country. We all feel boxed in a corner. We all feel like, and on top of all the bullshit that y'all are doing, sending millions of dollars to go kill innocent people. Everybody here is struggling. The, like if you're not a yeah. multi-millionaire or billionaire, you're poor. That's like, a th- that's a theme no matter who the president is. <laughs> like, <laughs> like T, exactly. Yeah, so why don't y'all yeah. sit central focus back yeah. On this country and everything that needs to be fixed here, instead of using all of our money, our tax money to kill people, that'd be helpful. I do think um, there's so many layers to this, man, because, again, she talks about the misspelling in her name in this song. It's, It's key to, like, a lot of the representation of the past of America, right? And she says, obviously, she ends the song with vote. She says, vote. Go vote. And that's after set, like, it's an, the album's so consistent in its themes, open, we talked about in the opening, we're here again, of addressing this country and the racism that this country is rooted in. She is up and down in this album, spoken about that at length. Like, it's everywhere. Yeah. Unless you're ignoring it, like, it's it's there. 
And it, like I said, it's not on the fence, like it's there. That whole lot of red is for me, like not just, obviously like I, she's speaking to like, she says like the, we get to the end, of the end of the track and we haven't gotten there yet, but she talks about um, the bones. The, the bones and the blood that, that built this country. Bones in the blood that built this country. When you say a whole lot of red and that white and blue in a track where you talk about vote, then you're obviously talking about a lot of our black ancestors that have lost their lives to give black people the right to vote. There's directly addressing that. So she's stating the importance to you to go vote. I also personally, I mean, I don't know if you could say that like maybe not, but I do think that like a whole lot of the red in that white and blue does speak to like Republican values. And the fact that obviously that's that's the red side. I think she's speaking to like the fact that like that's a problem as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, obviously like that's the theme is like let's make America great again, right? Because how was how did it used to be? We need to make it like it used to be. That was great, right? We had a mm -hmm. good time back then when they couldn't get their birth certificates, and and she would have kept being being like I do feel like she's speaking to that a little bit in this track. It's just I mean it's such a powerful song, and then the fact that it's a fucking galvanizing like come together type track is just that's how you do that <laughs> that, is, that is how you do that because it's not just like a vote and i said this on the show before but i'm like it's 2024 the year is going to wind down and we're going to end up talking about like some pretty serious stuff here on the channel unfortunately because that's where we are in this country yep but my my overall ideology of this where we are like right now is without getting specific is we have to vote and the options aren't great but that's why we have to vote, and then we have to put pressure on these on these people's necks that we vote for. We have to vote, and we have to continue to protest. We have to vote, and we have to continue to hold people accountable. You can't just vote and then like close your eyes, run away, and hope everything like hope everything goes well because it's not going to go well if you don't hold pressure to them to the to the necks. These people because they're going to campaign on a bunch of lies. It's what they always do, and and hopes and dreams of people that of things that they're not going to follow up on. It's just it's how it always goes. I've been really not looking forward to voting this year. I'm going to do it because I always do it because of what she said because of the people that lost their lives. She got she made me a little excited to vote. She made me a little <laughs> excited to vote. Beyonce, Beyonce said Beyonce, vote. Beyonce told me to go vote. All right. I'm a I'm a vote. Beyonce said so. Um <laughs> Especially if it's for Beyonce. Come on, Beyonce. Period. Um <laughs> then, we move, then we move along to another quick interlude. It's O Louisiana. That's a Chuck um Chuck Berry sample as well. Chuck Berry yeah. singing, pitched up, just vocals and things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it oh. slides. <laughs> yeah, we mentioned this, the the sexy song on this. And we hear a little caca, and it's an eagle sound or whatever. It is just seduction. This is this song is crazy lyrically. <laughs> like, it gets creamy in the middle. <laughs> Here I am, me and my me and my my mind wanting to be pure. Like I was like, oh, I love those Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Dosey -si Dose are my favorite Girl Scout cookies, but we all say talking about cootie cat. Vocals. Vocals and talking about cootie cat. You said soft kisses on some fat lips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She loves her husband. God damn. And this is one of the songs where I was like, Beyonce, and I'd be trying to be respectful. I'd be trying to be respectful. Beyonce a freak. She is. It's in her, mu it's it's in her it, music. Isn't, isn't that on self-titled especially? I haven't listened to it yet, but that's one thing I've heard. Is that I'm waiting for you to hear a song next. called Rocket. It's next. it's next. That album is next for me. I need you to hear Rocket. You're going to hear Rocket and be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, Beyonce and Blow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait for you to hear self-titled. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, Beyonce gets down. She, well, she, Desert Eagle. She gets she, <laughs> Beyonce. Nasty. And then it is, and then it slides into another one of my apps. That's perfect. Eagle is a perfect, fave. Perfect. That's Eagle is a fave. I forgot to mention it. I fave. said there's five perfect tracks. This is one of them. Riverdance is per. I couldn't Riv stop moving. Riverdance is perfect. It's perfect. That fucking quick acoustic guitar and how she. It's per. How she? I don't know. I don't know how she pulls off songs like this. It's this is well. This is the bridge of the album. This is the bridge from this album to Renaissance. This is the first time we we get a clear little bit of a house beat bounce on the shit. <laughs> no hands. Oh my god, um, it got stuck in my head real bad. I didn't have a whole lot of notes for this because I said I got lit and well, because she's saying a lot of a lot of the same stuff, but like it's still a good time. <laughs> it's still a good time. I I listened to it sober and then I listened to it lit and it was oh. I want to go. Somebody, see, we need to line dance. I just want to go out. I just want to mm -hmm. go out. 
Mm-hmm. This is my outside song. <laughs> this is my, this is one of my outside tracks. When and another one we're gonna get to later down the line. My God. Um, I but I love I, I, I know what you're talking about. I love listen to me. Okay. I oh, oh, this run is perfect. This run is perfect. Um Two Hands to Heaven is in my top, is in my top five as well, or top top ten. I gotta go through my shit, but this is a, one of my favorite songs she's ever made. Mm-hmm. I love I love this song. This is my favorite writing on the album as well. I think the, vi- the fucking visuals. The visual she opens it up like two hands to heaven, wild horses run wild. Think about the whole era, like both album covers. Um rhinestones and diamonds both shine in the light. I it's like the visuals to start off the song already again make me think about like we talked about earlier. I think it was with daughter where we just want I can't wait to see the visuals on this project. I just I in the meaning behind that line as well, right? Because I wrote that down. Rhinestones and diamonds both shine in the light. People what, is, would say, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. Because people would say rhinestones are less valuable than diamonds or rhinestones. But, oh, but rhinestones and diamonds both shine in the light. Okay. So the perspective. So the perspective. Like obviously, there's going to be there. There's pretty privilege. There's all of these things in the world and biases and vanity and stuff um, that can make people feel like, oh, well, they they're not as attractive as this person or they're not as talented or as given as this. Like, it doesn't matter. We all shine. We all shine in the light. And I love that so much. Um, I still don't know what these lines mean, but I love them. The toxic roses chased by wolves and carnivores, lost virgins with broken wings that will regrow. I was just, I just love the way it sounded. Yeah. It's how, the visuals. Beyonce does remind me often that she has a lot more money than me. <laughs> this, this, in a lot of in a lot of her music. <laughs> it, it's true. Hey, it's a fact. It's it's all good. Like it's all good. It just is a fact. And this song does that also. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that too. Listen, she earned it. Go on, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. It is what, hey, it's all yours. <laughs> the R and B at the end of this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely daggers pierced my heart many moons ago. The like used the toxic roses chased by wolves and carnivores and lost virgins with broken wings that will regrow. There, there's the broken wings line in um the Beatles cover, and then also like the toxic roses makes me think of like her mentioning the rose thorns. There's like some tie-ins to other songs a little bit in this song that um make me think of a little bit about like the cohesion of this. Absolutely. And then the whole, <laughs> just, ah, my favorite part probably is a little, baby, I've been waiting my whole life. Like that whole section, just the, ba- it, I, ah, it just sounds so rich and like full mm-hmm. and is just so, so gorgeous. Yeah. It just becomes like a love song pretty much. And, yeah. and I feel like the, the, the sonic of it all really fits that message really well. The you partied in Venus, we woke up in Mars. (laughs) Nasty. (laughs) You're so nasty, Beyonce. She's so nasty. Let's let's lose us in these sheets. Oh my God. Listen, (laughs) children will be made to this song, not by me. But what doesn't this album have? It's got she got she slipped the sex in there a couple tracks. She's got family, mom, dad, kids, lineage of her name, the like the historical references. What doesn't it have? I think this is like a, a lifetime album. I feel that way. I genuinely do. I'm scared for Act Three. I'm sure it'll. Uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't, even, I don't know I where even, she could even I can't go think, can't even from think about here. Right I don't even know where she would go from here. But I. I I know it might be equally, if not better than this, and I'm just mentally preparing for that. Um, but it's it's it does have everything, and you're absolutely correct. Yeah, this is um, <sighs> talk about it more in a big picture right at the end of. We're almost done here, but uh, now we come into my listen. These last two, this last three, for me. Um, tyrant, <laughs> bitch. Tyrant is another Tyrant's another perfect one. Tyrant's a fucking bop. That damn <laughs> like, beat, that beat drop. 
when it drop when it drops into the she's a tyrant every time i ride it every time i ride oh my god it's that first drop too that very first drop that caught me completely off guard and i had to like walk away i was just like what 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 are we doing what are we doing beyonce it's it's Dolly telling her to strike a match and light it up, and then the song is just nasty. Yeah, right after, yeah, as soon as as soon as as soon as Beyonce takes she, over, yeah. Country disgusting lyrics over a hip hop beat, and then them strings, like please. Mm-hmm. That yeah, that's the thing too is that like I know you talked about. Well, <laughs> Linda Martell has over many instances in this album said like. Think don't be boxed in by this genre. This album is a whole this song has got a whole hip hop beat, but that string is like mm. pulling it into the country genre still. Yep. That string is keeping it in there. It's just so yeah. And it, it makes Tyrant fit the album. You could say like this song would have sounded good on like whatever other album by Beyonce because it's got like so much hip hop influence. But that string is keeping it into it's keeping it in there. It's keeping it in the, the context of the album really well. Absolutely. And I was thinking, I didn't know if this was true or not, but I was like, is this, this might be her version, her version of the traditional Jolene as well, or it might be Jolene's song herself. The boy, you, uh, the boy, I know you're looking for me, how we going to hide it in the, I hated you once I envy you now. I was just listening to some of them lyrics hmm. and I was like, Hmm. Interesting. Cause it is, it's it's about somebody getting nasty, and I was like, maybe this is Jolene's track, and she talking about, I'm a tyrant every time I ride it. Now we going, how we gonna hide this shit? Where we going? Where we sneaking off to? And then, and then you have Beyonce or whoever being like, you owe me a debt, you stole him from me. I hated you once, I envy you now. Just tell me how. I was like, Int- I don't know, man. I want more clarification. So she, she want like the hangman to go after this person. It's is giving. That what? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Let us I don't know, know what y'all think in the comments. Cause I've really been <laughs> yeah. trying to process this. Cause I was like, some of the lyrics are a little sad. Some of the lyrics are a little like that whole little section. I hated you once. I envied you now. I was like, hmm. Yeah. Hey man, answer me now. You owe me a debt. You stole him from me. Hmm. Or maybe someone died. I don't know, man. Hey that- man, you owe me a debt. You stole him from me. The hangman stole a man from me. So he killed somebody I loved. But Hangman's also like, you know, a historical reference again, and I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know what the song's about, and I, this is probably like the least, the one I've been able to like least make sense of. I don't really care to make sense of it because it just sounds good. Yeah, it's yeah. such a bop, and the drops in it, like you said, and the the hip hop influ- influence while still being country. But if you really do want to attempt to break it down, yeah, there's a lot to really think about with this one. I love it. Like I said, let us know in the comments what y'all think about all of these tracks, like interpretations y'all have, because we still do. It's a lot to digest, man. It just came out, guys. It just came out. It's a lot. It's a lot to digest. So forgive us. But I this this next track is my second favorite. (laughs) Sweet honey bucking. Shabuzi's back in the house. I love his voice. Uh, I love that. I love it that he has a rap verse and everything he's talking about is like just straight country. Straight country. Country voice in the day that I'm dead. Yay! Nope. In the background. Nope. Yay! <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. It's the fact that these are three different songs. This song is, this run, especially if you forget about Two Hands to Heaven for a second, if you take like River Dance, Tyrant, and Sweet Honey Bucking, that's asinine like it's just asinine those three songs how different they are but also like pulling a lot of similar influence but also like country while pulling like another main influence um sweet honey bucking the perfect example because there's a lot of there's a lot of hip-hop influence again mm-hmm. but shibuzi's whole verse is all country and uh they're talking about coming home we're coming we're country home and like I feel like that almost works as a good closer, even though Amen's the perfect closer. It almost works as a good closer because like we've we've arrived, like we've arrived home, we've arrived country home at the end of this album. I'm obsessed. It well, once I realized that the little stars in between were separating the three songs, I was like, this, this what, what is this woman doing? Oh, because the song, because the song is teetering, in like like three different places basically. 
Yeah, Sweet is the first one. It's so yeah. beautiful. The damn house beat came in, and I was like, we're just sliding right into Renaissance, huh? We're just sli <laughs> sliding right into Renaissance. She opens with um uh, a Patsy Klein cover, and it's uh, I Fall to Pieces. She was one of the first country artists to cross over to pop, which I love. Did she put that on the back end? She's like, yeah, because the next album is a look. Oh, it just hurts, man. It just hurts all of the detail that this woman puts into her art. Um, honey, stuck in me all night. Like, <laughs> what, like honey is is. I wish honey was like a little bit longer because I love this so much. Uh -huh. but, but bucking is my favorite. But I love like the 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 galloping. Um, going on to it's just so smart, uh, sexy and fun. And Look at that horse! Remember, I told you there's moments throughout that I was like, "Oh, she's she's just being funny. She being cute and funny." That's one of the moments. Look at that horse! Look at that, that horse. horse! Look at that horse! <laughs> it's so like, fun, though. It's, it's so a, fun. I love it's, it so much, but it also feels like teasing. Like, ha ha! Look at that it's horse! Just, it's just moments. Though. That's why it's so fun because it's, it's moments. Amidst an entire album that's pretty serious, yeah, but like she, but still, like the moments of fun are in there. So the balance is just an entirely balanced project. Though right after those horse line is the album of the year line. She mentioned, she mentioned it. She mentioned. It. I'm surprised she mentioned it. I'll be honest. I'm not not after Jay Z's speech he made. I mean, <laughs> I'm not surprised whatsoever. Oh, that was more like a, a stream of like conscience. <laughs> like it's her not. It don't matter. I've come back and fuck up the pimp. Beyonce is also a writer. She wrote on all of these tracks. I it, she was like, it don't matter. I'm still gonna continue to be excellent. Y'all can ignore me all you'd like. Um, that line said, is such, that, that line is such a flex and a fact. I cut like I take it on the chin and I come back and fuck up the pen because it's happened multiple times. And each time it's happened, she's come back with like another better, better album. You could say like, <laughs> it's like, it's not just one time. Like every time it's happened, she's come back with an album that you could say is better. So that's why that line is such a flex. It's not just one time. It's, cr it's, it's, it's insane. So insane. And then <laughs> Say things that I know will offend. Wear things that I know gonna trend. Like this, is like the opposite. <laughs> Talk about your influence, ma'am. Talk about how this is good. This is yet another cultural shift you've created, girl. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But bucking, but bucking is like a mechanical bull. But like, <laughs> like. <laughs> I was just, I was like, oh my God, another song that has me moving involuntarily. Like, I will, I, yes, popping ass until the cows come home to Buckin. Buckin's my favorite. And then uh, she, and then she closes the album. She closes the album. She gets back on a serious tone. But it's like, if you're, st if you remember anything about the first track somehow, some way, <laughs> this is this is because we've been through so much since then. This links directly with the first track. I mean, she repeats a couple lines. She said them like there was the Amen line in American Requiem. She says them big ideas. They're buried. Like she, it's completely connected. It's the perfect closer. It's the perfect closer. It reiterates um, some lines. Uh, yeah, more from, shade. More bringing. Listen, statues, all your, all of them fancy statues y'all made, lies of stone. Y'all have tried to rewrite history. Take the, tear all that shit down. She, like, and it did. The, those Confederate statues were destroyed during the George Floyd protests. And she's speaking to that. Those lie, those, those statues built on lies crumbled. Again, crumbled. this house, this house was built with blood and bone, and mm -hmm. it makes me feel like, like, yes especially black people we're here in america but when is like this ever really felt like home for us when when have we ever been treated like this was our home we built this country and in in it's still it's still everything that it is yeah. so it's a lot to it's just a lot to process but also just a reminder of how strong we are like and how strong we've had to be this entire time to stay here 
And it's all like I and I famously talk about what talked about on this podcast, how I want to leave this country. And I do. Um, But my lineage is here. My lineage is here. My family is here. My bloodline was here. My ancestors fought and died here. And there's so much of me that that I want to leave, but also stay here and fix this shit because my family is here. And my siblings want kids, and, and my lineage is probably going to continue living on in this fucking country. So, like, adjust your minds. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's just so much. It's so, 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 so much. And she, like you said, she touched on all of it, and it was beautifully wrapped back into American Requiem. And at the end of the goddamn song, it sounds like we're being abducted. It sounds like we're being taken to another fucking world. And that, for me, screams visual as well. Because of my reaction, I did it. I played the end of Amen into I Am That Girl, the first track on Renaissance. Oh, yeah? And it fit perfectly. And I, I screamed my head off. <laughs> I, I screamed my head off, which is why I think it's going to be a movie. I need that if that's real. I think it's going to be a movie, man. I, I really do. Yeah, that last line on, Am- on Amen is... um. I mean, she reiter- she reiterates, obviously, the mold ideas are buried here. But right before that, she says, well, again, we'll be the one that purify us of our, or that purify our father's sins. So, again, that's Beyonce leading the revolution. Founding fathers. Beyonce leading the revolution. Y'all was talking all that shit. It's this whole album. It's this whole album, man. It's so, it's just so important. And it's not like, see, here's the thing. Like, there's been music made by people who have spoken on problems in the country who have spoken on past issues who have tried to like create a movement it's happened no one as important as beyonce or or like as big as beyonce no one with the ancestry of beyonce uh no one who are who's creating this like reclamation era that beyonce has created of genres uh and you spoke to not feeling welcome or not this not feeling like a home like as a black person, which obviously Beyonce is as well, but that's like the whole point of the album is not feeling home, like in the country genre. So it's like a like a microcosm, and she's like inside of a home she's not welcome in, inside of a country she's not welcome in, and and she just like this whole album speaks to somehow all of that, and the music is great. That's the other thing. That's the other thing because you can have the the best messages in the world, but like you're not gonna want to you're not gonna want to listen to it if the music's not good. The music's not good. The music's fucking excellence. It's excellence. I, I don't know. Like I don't know what else to say. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. Literally of all time, of all time, of all time. I don't know. How of, time you like grow up and and twenty thirty years from now you're just like talk like just letting people know like hey the young kids like make sure you listen to cowboy carter like make sure you i got my vinyls for a reason educate yourself i need you to educate yourself will be required listening with auntie maya when you come over (laughs) we're gonna have we're we're gonna have study sessions of legends and and the art that they've created and how it shift culture shift the world and i think i think that this is an excellent it's already doing insane numbers. Like you said, people are tapping in and they never tapped into Beyonce. If anybody... Ooh, it's about, I'm about to say something real. Listen, all, all everything that people like felt in regards to how she moves around like this government, the things that these govern, this government is doing and things, it's so clear where she stands. And if you have any questions or anything after this, and you're simply finding something that you want to be mad about, but it's all up and through this shit. This is how she feels. She doesn't have to say anything. <laughs> like she's an artist. She put it in her fucking art. She really doesn't. And she doesn't even have to like, she doesn't even have to endorse anyone because the message is already in her music. Yeah. Like she's giving you the message and the inspiration to feel how you feel and go make your own choice. So you can't even hold that against her. Like if you were like, well, she's not endorsing you. you she, Mama said whole, vote. She said vote. The vote. whole the whole album is an endorsement for just moving this country forward away from the old ideas that are fucking buried here. I have no, I, I genuinely have nothing else. I don't have anything else. We got to two hours on. This is this part. That's, I feel very good about this. I do as well. But like Beyonce is, has been a light for me for many, many, many years. And I'm consistently 
always inspired by her, not just her voice and like everything that she can do, like talent wise, but by how she uses the, the blessings that she has, the voice that she has in the space that she occupies where she can reach so many people. This is what she's putting into the world. Yeah, it, and it deserves the utmost respect. I'm sorry. Like, even if you you don't care for her, like different things, you cannot dismiss the importance of this project, and and the and the the just the excellence of it, man. You can't dismiss it. You can't yeah. dismiss it. Yeah, one thing that I I've seen. I don't I'm, I don't know if it's like a regular thing or not, but I've seen like this. This is a person that's like not exactly been forward vocally like as far as standing up for things like outside of the music you know what i mean like coming out and saying something about important things going on whether they're racially or as far as injustice goes but like beyonce is an artist and she's and always put into her music listen to black parade that's what listen i'm saying like yeah. so many like there's so like, many instances that's her outlet so if you're if if you're saying that you're just factually incorrect because you're just not her outlet is her music that's where that's where the most people are going to listen to her through, and that's she, that is where most of her impact lies. I and feel she, like she just made to me one of the most impact the most impactful album I've ever heard in my life. That's beautiful. I love for me, that for me. No, me too. I feel like me too as well. And just being like watching her all of these years and watching her climb and climb and climb and climb and claw her way to where she is now as a black woman just always i she just I, I feel so capable i just feel so capable and and like i can do anything when i'm listening to this woman every single time every single time and that is why i revere her the way that i do that is why i talk about her the way that i do um because this is the purpose of life bro we're here to inspire others we're here to uplift others we're here to guide if we can and it's it's clear that she can and she has a space and the want to do it so that's what she does and it doesn't come off falsified it doesn't come off like she's just trying to get a check this this woman put this album took five years and it sounds yeah. like it <laughs> yeah the detail yeah. it talk, sounds you, like it you talk about visuals man that's gonna it's gonna be expensive I could, I, to be, like, to be expensive I don't care how much. I don't care, Beyonce. We, we were comparing about, uh, uh, complaining about prices and moving. I don't give a damn. I don't yeah. give a damn when the, when the visuals drop. I'm gonna be there. I don't care. Dude, she's a she's a we're we're living the way that we talk about like you know Frederick Douglass, and Martin Luther King, and Malcolm X. Like the way we talk about those past figures and heroes. We're gonna be talking about Beyonce that way in like 40, 50 years. Like people are gonna be talking about her in that way. Thank you. And we're talking about an artist. So we talk about like Muhammad Ali, because this stuff extends past political figures and past figures like revolutionary leaders. Muhammad Ali was another one. Kareem Abdul Jabbar is another one. Those are athletes yes. that have like been a part of those type of movements at the forehead of those movements. Beyonce is going to be that person we talk about in that group with you know a lot of the leaders we talk about now in that way. We're going to be talking about her that way like 40, 50 years from now. Absolutely. And there's so many, there's so much discourse and talk online about what she says and what she doesn't say. And I feel like I've said it before. Unfortunately, every single one of our leaders, our black leaders that, that really pushed us forward were taken from us. Mm -hmm. They were taken from us. So what, so what are you asking of this woman with three children to go out and, and, and extend her neck out with no guarantee that anything is going to shift or change if she does. She's doing what she can from a place that is safe. And I'm not going to critique that. I'm not I'm not going to critique that. Everybody's talking about, she's just worried about her money. She is not, bro. She's had money for a very long time. What she yeah. hasn't had for a long time is her family, is her children. And and she has a lot more to live for. I'm sorry, she does. So like, if if Mama really wanted to get on the street, and I have no doubt that she that she would, she's not going to for that reason, and she does not have to. So I just want to put all all them conversations to go to bed because this album is a clear, a clear. Uh, Y'all know where she stands. That's it. You know where she stands. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. It's also a 
almost three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys, we, uh, we stayed up late for this one. We did stay up late. We wanted to get it out on Friday for you guys. We appreciate you so much. For supporting us um if you loved this album if you like this breakdown give us a big thumbs up man we appreciate it michael you want to say anything else no I, if you're still I, I always love the people the most that are still here at the end listening all the most all the realest ones yeah <laughs> the realest ones we appreciate yeah. you so thank, so much thank you for still being here leave your comments about your interpretation of certain songs that maybe we left holes in the discussion and didn't quite touch on please let us know this is a group discussion not just between Maya and I absolutely I, I want to help please help us with Tyrant I really do want to know who <laughs> I know whose perspective the song is from and every like, time I ride it yeah I'm trying to be absent in Beyonce you're not helping, <laughs> helping shit just a whole bunch of songs I would have added to my freaky playlist and I'm trying to like, <laughs> relax um, but thank you guys so much for listening. You can catch us everywhere. Follow us at Take Away My Mic. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.